Here we'll learn about DNA structure and compaction. We'll learn the levels of DNA structure and how DNA is compacted within the nucleus of a eukaryotic cell. To begin, start a table so we can learn the key components of DNA structure. Denote that, like proteins, DNA maintains the following levels of structure. Primary structure, which is the sequence of nucleotides. Secondary structure, which is a double helix stabilized by hydrogen bonds. Tertiary structure, which can be one of two possible states, relaxed or supercoiled. We'll illustrate secondary and tertiary structure. We learned primary structure elsewhere, but we'll summarize some key points about it here. Draw a series of nucleotides as follows. Draw a sugar phosphate backbone as a series of pentagons bound to phosphate groups. Now add the nitrogenous bases as follows. Redraw the pyrimidines, cytosine and thymine, each as a hexagon. Represent the purines, guanine and adenine, each as a hexagon connected to a pentagon. Now label 5' prime for the nucleotide with a free phosphate group and add a hydroxyl group to the nucleotide at the opposite end. Label it 3'. Prime. Finally indicate that the 5' prime to 3' prime structure gives DNA polarity. Next let's illustrate secondary structure. Draw two simplified strands of DNA in a double helix structure. Label the 5' prime and 3' prime ends of one strand. Then indicate that the second strand is anti-parallel to the first. Demarcate the following bases on the 5' prime to 3' prime strand. Thymine, guanine, and guanine, and thymine. Indicate that there are actually 10 base pairs per helical turn. We draw just two for simplicity. Now fill in the complementary purine or pyrimidine base on the opposite strand. Adenine, cytosine, then cytosine and adenine. Write that because of purine pyrimidine base pairing, DNA contains an equal amount of purines and pyrimidines. Finally, let's draw a single line for each hydrogen bond that forms between each purine pyrimidine pair. Show that thymine and adenine form two hydrogen bonds. Show that guanine and cytosine form three hydrogen bonds. These hydrogen bonds maintain DNA's secondary structure. As an important clinical correlation, denote that many anti-cancer drugs bind to a groove in the DNA double helix to prevent DNA replication and transcription in cancerous cells. Finally, let's illustrate tertiary structure. Indicate that eukaryotic DNA can either be relaxed or supercoiled. Continue our linear DNA helix structure and indicate that it's relaxed. To illustrate supercoiled DNA, let's use the analogy of a telephone cord. Draw a telephone cord and show that its structure resembles a double helix. Now extend it to illustrate that the helical cord can coil on itself to form a super coil. Note that many viruses and prokaryotes have circular DNA that can also be relaxed or super coiled. We'll discuss this elsewhere. In eukaryotes, tertiary structure is integral to DNA compaction in the nucleus. Return to our table to learn the key levels of DNA compaction. Denote that they are the nucleosome, chromatin, a solenoid, also referred to as a nucleofilament. Let's illustrate them now. To begin, draw a cluster of eight histone proteins. Write that histone proteins are small, basic proteins that are rich in arginine and lysine, and that there are five classes of histone proteins. This octamer contains two copies of four different histones. Show that our double helix wraps around the histone proteins in what is equivalent to approximately one and three quarters of a supercoil in length. Now indicate that a nucleosome comprises a histone octamer 
and the DNA that supercoils around it. Write that histones can be acetylated or methylated, which regulates the local compaction of DNA. Now draw another histone octamer, extend our DNA to wrap around it. Next, label the DNA between the nucleosomes as a DNA spacer. Indicate that it's about 20 to 80 base pairs in length. All nucleosomes are separated by DNA spacers and resemble beads on a string. Show that H1, a histone protein, binds the DNA spacer. Write that it facilitates the tight packing of nucleosomes. Now represent our nucleosome as a square with DNA wound around it. Next, draw a series of vertical stacks of four nucleosomes each. Label this entire structure as chromatin, a term for DNA and its associated proteins. Chromatin also includes non-histone proteins, but we'll not draw them here. Write that chromatin can further divide into heterochromatin, which is DNA that is highly condensed and not transcribed, euchromatin, DNA that is not highly condensed and regularly transcribed. Finally, draw a thick helical tube and label it a solenoid, also referred to as a nucleofilament. Illustrate that the close packing of nucleosomes allows chromatin to wind into a solenoid. Finally, let's illustrate how DNA is compacted in preparation for cell division. Draw a circular nuclear scaffold protein, which is found in the nucleus as its name suggests. Show that nucleofilaments coil and form loops that anchor at the scaffold protein and radiate from its center. Illustrate that the resulting structure is a condensed chromosome, which comprises two sister chromatids that join at a centromere. This structure is visible under a microscope and is indicative of a dividing cell. This concludes our diagram.